Thank you very much for the introduction. So today I speak about Boomerang. Boomerang is a highly precise demand-driven point analysis that we developed for Java. We that is Lisa Engrian, um, Karim Ali and Eric Bodden. I'm happy that they are also in the audience today with me. So um, let's have a little motivation about point analysis. So there are a lot of algorithms in um, static analysis like whole graph generation, program slicing, type state analysis, taint analysis and various others. And all of them basically have one bottleneck. All of these analyses require pointer information. So pointer information, so to, to, for you to understand how, how thin this bottleneck is, we later computed that roughly 60% of the analysis time of a type state analysis um, was used to compute pointer information. But it's not only that pointer information um, reduces the efficiency, but it's also that the precision is um, driven by a pointer analysis. So these analysis can be more precise if you use a more precise pointer analysis. So having that in mind, I briefly want to discuss different point information that you can compute because these vary, these vary according to different point analysis. So there are points to analysis. So in points to analysis, you basically can trigger queries about variables in the program. Like here you can see the points to set of B and you would compute basically backward um, following the assignment chain you would compute that the that B has been allocated in the first line of the program. So the points to information is then a points to set because it can it can have multiple allocation sites because we're doing static analysis here. So, but then in addition to points to analysis, there are alias analysis. In alias analysis, typically you can query for two given variables in the program and you will receive a Boolean answer to um, so the question if both variables alias. So an alias analysis would then just walk backwards till it discovers an assignment like b equals a and then it can directly stop at that point and report both variables alias. So of course this is can, therefore they can be sometimes a bit more efficient. But one thing that I want to note is that from points to information you can always get to alias information. So if you, if you have a points to analysis you can query the points to set for both variables, take the intersection. If it's non-empty, you know that they're alias. Okay, so far so good, but now we discovered that there is actually one gap in research. So um, that is, you can't easily, or with these points to analysis, you can't directly compute all aliases to a given variable. In that program code, we would like to know that all aliases to A are A, B, and C. And we would like to have that in a demand-driven manner. So, okay, where, where do you actually need this information? This information is really necessary and helpful in, in, in clients like a taint analysis or a type state analysis. You can also use it. Here we have a little example for a taint analysis. So a taint analysis normally discovers connections or data flows between sources and things. For example, you wonder in such a prog program is your PIN number, say, of your credit card ever leaked. So a taint analysis therefore would start at a sensitive uh, source and in that example would taint the variable secret. Then secret flows in the next statement to some field of some object. So it would flow to a.pin in that case. So the taint analysis would then taint a.pin. But exactly at those statements, you actually not only want to taint a.pin, but you also need to taint all variables that alias to a.pin. And you want to compute directly all aliases to a. Those are a, b, and c again. And only then you can, the taint analysis can detect that in the next statement there is a leak um, that c.pin is tainted, not a, uh, is leaked. Not a.pin is leaked, but c.pin. Otherwise, if you wouldn't include this all alias information, the um, taint analysis wouldn't detect that leak. Okay, so 
what is the current solution to this problem? So currently, what you can do is you iterate over all local variables and ask if they alias. So if you have a points to alias analysis, you have to iterate over all these variables, A, B, and C. And then you would also need to, to ask if uh, A and secret alias. So as you can see, this is a serious overhead because we, we are here and we speak here about demand-driven analysis. You want to reduce the number of queries and you don't want to iterate over all these local variables to trigger new queries all the time. Okay, so therefore we designed Boomerang. So Boomerang is um, an analysis that you can trigger, so it's flow sensitive, you can trigger it at any statement and it, you can query for a vari variable at a given statement. So let's say you're Boomerang for, you want to know what is the aliases of A. It then first computes a backward pass discovering the points to information, all the, the points to sets, and then it simply computes in a forward pass all aliases that you want to know. So here you see, already see the, the result set of Boomerang is quite rich. You have points to information and you have all aliases directly. So in this example, it looks really simple, but point analysis is way more complex. And this complexity arises as soon as you introduce fields in your program. So let's have a quick look how Boomerang does solve um, a, a program where fields are introduced. So here on that simple code, we want to ask what are the aliases of C. So in a first computation step, it would go backward, discovers that C has been allocated at the third line in the program, and then it computes a forward pass. As you can see now, in the forward pass, first of all, the, you would only compute the alias information C and A.F. Those are all aliases to, to C, but there is information missing. And in Boomerang, we collect at this point, at these five field write statements, we collect so-called points of indirections. And you have to trigger a subquery. So Boomerang calls itself recursively at the field write statement to trigger what are all aliases at A at the given field write statement A dot F equals C. So then it computes a backward path and a forward path again and it computes all aliases to A, are, those are A and B. Only if we have that information we can finally compute the, the complete information, namely that all aliases to C are actually A dot F, B dot F and C. So here is one thing I want to note. So we, we uh, so Boomerang uses IFDS internally to solve these subqueries. For those of you who knows who know IFDS, IFDS is actually only solving distributive problems. So alias analysis normally is a non-distributive problem, but we managed to divide it into those subqueries such that you can use IFDS to uh, solve a non-distributive problem. So um, we, we build an out of fixed point iteration on top of it and resolve these subqueries and then you can get the right information even if we use a distributive framework. So and also because we use IFDS we receive directly flow sensitivity and context sensitivity from this underlying framework. Okay so that is roughly the idea of Boomerang. But then we wanted to integrate Boomerang into a client, say a taint analysis. And in a taint analysis, you actually want to coordinate. So the client, the taint analysis should coordinate the pointer analysis. And um, that's done in what we call the context resolution. What do I mean by this? So have a look at such an example. You have um, some taint flow, so you have some secret, um, that is within method context one. So f is tainted, and this flows then um, to the method foo, where there is a field assignment to some variable. So a dot f equals s. So at these statements, the taint analysis needs to also not only taint a dot f, but directly all aliases of a dot f. So, but just assume that there is actually a second context under which the 
the first two parameters of foo are alias, but there is actually no taint. So what does it mean? So if we trigger a query for aliases of A under context 1, the output should be all aliases are just A. But whereas if you trigger a query like under, under context 2, the alias should be A and B. And of course, to remain, to remain precise, you don't want to um, merge these two contexts. And the, so boomerang should follow the path from the taint analysis. So, and then to compute the right query. So it shouldn't go back to context 2 and it shouldn't compute any information within context 2, but just within context 1. And this is possible with the context resolution that we have designed in Boomerang. So for the details, uh, you can have a look at, at the paper. So those are mainly the features of Boomerang. So um, let's now go to the evaluation. So we implemented Boomerang um, within Suit, that is a static analysis framework for Java, and um, we wanted to evaluate precision and recall of Boomerang, but also the scalability. So, as I said, we implemented Boomerang and we wanted to compare it to existing analyses. So, we took two analyses, one is a points to analysis by Manu Sritran and others from uh, PLDI 2006, and the other one is an alias analysis from, from Darkon Young um, and others that has been published on ISTA 2011. So both analyses are uh, flow insensitive, but as well context sensitive, and they are also demand driven. That makes them what we thought com comparable as possible. Okay, let's first focus on precision and recall. So. For precision and recall, there was a problem to compare. That is, there is no yet a benchmark suite for point analysis on which you can compare. So therefore, within this work, we decided to come up with a benchmark suite that, on which you can evaluate pointer queries. And um, we call that benchmark suite pointer bench, and we designed it in a way that there are really the, those are really small programs on which you can easily um, describe the pointer information that points to information but also alias information. Um, so we, we annotated all these programs with, um, with the queries and the results. So we made it publicly available on GitHub and we are really happy if people contribute, contribute to it and add additional test cases such that comparison of pointer information becomes more easily in the future. So once we had this benchmark suite, we decided to, or we wanted to evaluate those three analyses on this benchmark suite. So here you see a diagram on, in which we show the precision and recall values. So all three analyses have, have a recall higher than 95%, and also their precision values are quite close, between 80 and 90%. So we wondered what, what, where's the difference here? And we wanted to um, let you know that Boomerang is slightly more precise than the alias analysis because there are cases like um, such where you have a little program where um, you actually don't have an allocation size to variable, but B and A are alias, or the alias analysis assumes they are aliased because it detects the statement B equals A, but there is actually no allocation size to A and B. So for the uh, slightly higher recall, um, the queries for so Boomerang supports queries of type like you can query where did a.f.b come from. So you can directly receive this information and it was not possible with the other two analyses. So this was the evaluation for precision and recall. For scalability, we then um, used Floatroid Floatroid is a taint analysis tool that has been published on PLDI 2014, and um, it's, it's, it can be used to find flows in Android applications. And what we did, we integrated Boomerang and all the other analyses into Floatroid, 
Um, as I said before, like for the for Boomerang, you can directly use the right query format and it gives you directly all aliases, whereas for the other two analyses, you have to iterate over all local variables to get the right information. So now um, we then used uh, 100 applications from the App Store and um, plugged these three analyses in and let them run on, on, on the applications. So in this chart, we show here the analysis time of the, of the applications, so the averages of these 100 applications. And you can see that when you use Boomerang, the analysis time is way or is half, half or a third part of the analysis time for when you use the alias or the points to analysis. So one thing why that happens is because you have to query a lot more queries with the other two analyses. So in the second diagram here, you see that the analysis had to trigger way more queries when you use the alias or points to analysis. So of course, then as both anal or as all three analyses are demand driven, so you um, you will lose efficiency because you have to evaluate more queries. So, but then we also wanted to know how not only about efficiency, but we also were interested in the um, in the precision of the analysis, and therefore we also counted the number of taint flows that were reported by Flowdroid um, when, when you use Boomerang or the other two analyses. So we then uh, normalized all these, um, all these flows per application and took the average. And uh, here you see that when you use Boomerang, you, have, you will find less flows in the application. So you might now wonder, okay, you find less flows, does that mean um, you're less, you don't find the right flows, but we, we checked out, so Floatroid has a lot of test cases, and on all these test cases, we, we it figured out that when you use Boomerang, you received the right answer, but whereas when you integrated the alias or the points to analysis, you would get spurious flows, and those were false negatives. So on these applications, we therefore assume that these flows are um, false positives for the other two analyses. We also compared to, uh, we also used the original Flowdrive implementation and we, uh, this, uh, this implementation agreed on the same flows for as Boomerang did. So with this in mind, I want to conclude the talk. And so just that have, let's just recap that. So pointer information is still one bottleneck of um, static analysis where we thought it has not been yet solved like that you couldn't so far you couldn't get the right uh, so the the query formats were not appropriate yet so and due to the weak for query formats of demand of existing demand driven alias and pointer analysis you will end up having a serious overhead in the number of queries that you have to compute so therefore we designed Boomerang that, is, that consists of backward and forward passes that directly computes pointer information but also all alias information. And eventually we have shown in the evaluation that you will end up being more efficient but also more precise. With that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take your questions. Uh, that's a very nice talk and enjoy it. Uh, so my question here is that in the backward pass, is it uh, over approximation or the definition should be precise? And if it's not over approximation, how can you handle uh, loops? So um, we go back in the backward pass, you basically go backward till you find all the allocation sites. And there are also points of indirection at which you have to query more information. So in the backward pass already you will trigger Subqueries that you have to resolve, and it will go to all these allocation sites. Um, so it, it also uses IFDS in the backward pass and in the forward pass, and therefore it it will um, 
it will be an over approximation in the first part, part like for the backward pass but then from all these points to information it will perform a forward pass again did it answer uh, your question yeah on the first one the, what about the loops are you going to unroll okay. the loops or so for loops we actually um so boomerang yeah. uses access graphs so not access path so access graphs are kind of a regular expression over field expressions and therefore you you will have an over approximation of course at some point but you will we, we can handle loops and recursion in that manner thank, thank you Ross. I was just wondering your benchmark suite for pointer analysis you uh, are the it has a bunch of programs yes. but also a collection of queries yes so are the queries mostly tailored to your security analysis applications or are you trying to cover other kinds of point analyses users as well so um, these pointer queries are take care of um, so first of all these benchmark suite we have different programs for different types of features that a point analysis should um, take care of like flow sensitivity context sensitivity um, so different test cases are for different features we try to separate these test cases um, and what we so these the information you get and get from these um, on these programs is like you can query for one variable and you know the points to set of that variable but you will also uh, know all aliases so it should be the information information sufficient for every pointer and alias analysis that's what we hope